Well, hi campers, this is Darren with My RV Works. Uh, and guess what, I got another furnace. Uh, we got called out uh, for a furnace. Customer states the furnace is not doing anything at all. And so I almost was not gonna do a video on this, but when I started to do some diagnosis on it, I felt that I could add value to you by um, letting you follow along uh, with how I'm determining what the problem is here. So I certainly have enough furnace repair videos and maybe this video will continue on and we'll, we'll I'll walk you through everything else that I have to do to get this furnace working. But there was something unique about how I started diagnosing this issue that I want to bring you along on. And maybe it might help is my goal. So uh, let me get the camera spun around and we'll show you what I've discovered up to this point. I haven't even taken the furnace out, but I'll give you a big picture of you and then we'll jump right in. Now, here we go. Okay, so before I jump into listening for the clicks and reading voltages and things like that, I did want to make one point to the guys that are watching that are professional at the level that I'm at. Uh, we do have a large group of people that are watching our channel, uh, everything from you know campers that are broke down and they're trying to fix their own stuff to professional RV technicians and dealerships and shops to the manufacturers that are making these RVs. Uh, big shout out to folks over there in Australia, UK, all over the world that are watching our channel. So thanks for that. Um, but this is particularly something I want to mention to those guys that are mobile RV service guys, um, or even maybe some service riders at some dealerships and shops. When the customer states that there's an issue with their RV, what I like to do in the field, a best practice that I've developed, is I want that customer to demonstrate that problem to me. Um, we're out here today in rainy Elwha um, because customer states that their furnace doesn't work. Well, I want them to demonstrate to me that the furnace doesn't work, or before I start taking panels down, taking furnaces apart, I want to demonstrate that to myself. I need to prove some things out so I know where the problem is. I'll make a link to a video we did on a thermostat. Uh, we went out to do a job because the customer states that their furnace and their air conditioner isn't working. And it really turned out to be that they didn't understand how their thermostat worked. And so we made a video on how to make thermostats work. And we got a lot of good um, um, playtime on that. So uh, we'll make a link to that one. So having said that, if you're going to do mobile RV service or if you're a service rider or a technician, you have access to the customer, hey, have that customer demonstrate to them, get, demonstrate to you what, what the issue is. So let me take you in. We're going to walk you through. We're going to listen to some things, some clicks. I'm going to explain to you what you should hear, and then we will look to see if we hear those things, and then we'll follow the trail. Okay, so here we go. Here we have the customer's thermostat. Okay, now I've got it in the off position. And on this particular RV, if we pan down we have their furnace right down there, okay? So next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pan you guys up to the air conditioner. Now I'm gonna be quiet. I'll tell you what I'm gonna even do. I'm gonna put my lavalier up on that air conditioner because I want you to listen for a click. So let me get set up and do that. Okay, so I don't know if you can hear me. I got the lavalier up in the um, register of the, the plenum of the air conditioner and back behind me here is the thermostat. So I'm gonna turn the furnace on. You should hear a click up there. That's what we're gonna do. Okay, turning furnace on. Hear that click? On, off. Okay, that's me turning the furnace on and off. Now, the reason I wanted you to do that, or wanted you to hear that, is because if I'm gonna turn the furnace on, you're gonna hear a click in the control module of your air conditioner, okay? Now let's follow the trail again. What does that click mean? So follow with me on this. I have one thermostat, right? The thermostat, I can go to cool or heat, but your thermostat's gonna be able to control air or heat, okay? You might have heat pump, you might have a lot of other things, but the bottom line is you have one point in your RV that's detecting temperature, okay? This thermostat, duotherm, is talking to your Dometic air conditioner on this RV. You might have a Coleman, you have, might, who knows what you have, but just follow with me on the big picture here. This thermostat here is, is communicating to that control board. So, um, up in that thermostat control module, up in your air conditioner, you have a dry contact closure relay, okay? So what dry contact closure means is neither side of these are, are energized uh, of the contacts, okay? So, but the control module is, is what's making those contacts close. So what we do is we take the, if you've watched thousands of, well, I've got probably 20 or 30, maybe, I don't know, other furnace videos. I'll make a list, a link for the playlist up there. Um, remember there's four wires that leave the furnace. Here, let me guys sit you up back here so I can use my hands to talk and all this kind of stuff. <clears throat> Ta-da! I feel like the Swedish chef. Burk, burk, burk. Um, 
So on that furnace, which we're gonna jump into here in just a few minutes, you're gonna have four wires. A, they change colors, but a plus, a minus, and then two control wires. The plus might be red, the plus might be black. The minus might be black, the minus might be yellow. The two other wires are typically blue. They might be a light blue and a dark blue. They might be both the same blue. They might be blue and blue with a white stripe. But the point is there's four wires. For our purposes, explaining what's going on up top, I'm going to eliminate the plus and the minus and talk about the two blue wires. So the furnace, as I've said in other videos, could be on its own island. It's all by itself. And there are four wires that are coming from the shore to get to the island to make the furnace work. Stay with me on that. So we have our two plus and minuses. There's our 12 volts leaving these two. The furnace needs to get the signal to start. How does the furnace know to start? We're gonna take one of those wires, we're gonna put 12 volts on that, and we're gonna send that up to that thermostat up in the ceiling plenum of the air conditioner. He's always got 12 volts sitting on him. A lot of times in your furnace, you're gonna take the plus wire that's coming from the fuse, and a lot of times they'll bond the plus wire and one of the blue wires to make the blue wire 12 volts hot. Typically, overwhelmingly, that's what they're gonna do. So let's just take this wire right here that goes up into the ceiling plenum, okay? Now, remember up in the ceiling plenum, this thermostat right here is controlling the relay up in the control module of your air conditioner, okay? So this one's gonna be the relay that the thermostat's controlling. These are two wires coming from the furnace. This one here is the one that has a 12 volts on it. So we're gonna connect that one. These are just plugged on. You don't need to know what's going on inside of your, your thermostat control module. But we're just gonna put a little pluggy thing on this and we're gonna connect this wire to this part of the relay. And then we're gonna connect this one, which comes back to the furnace, to this part of the relay. Are you following with me? Now when this relay closes, because that thermostat told it to, because we're on furnace, it closes, thereby we're connecting these two wires, okay? Okay, we're connecting, this is the relay, these are the wires, we're connecting these two wires. Thereby, back to our four wires on our furnace, plus and minus, two blue wires, one's wet, goes up to our ceiling plenum control module of our air conditioner, it makes contact closure, connects, now I got 12 volts coming back down to the furnace. Now that I have 12 volts coming back down to the furnace, that tells the furnace to start. Great, wonderful, let's move on with the trail. Now, here's what we know. When I put this in furnace, which is pushing this one down, you hear the click up top, right? It's very audible. The next click you should hear is maybe a click down here where the furnace is, okay? Now, when I got here, I started to do exactly what I'm doing right now. Have I taken a single tool out of my tool bag? No, I have not. I've not taken any tool bags out. I'm just using my, my, my eyes and my ears. That's my best tool that I have, and I'm following the trail. This is the kind of stuff that I want the customer to demonstrate to me. I want, because maybe they don't know how to do this, or maybe, maybe the thermostat is down here to 40 degrees, for example, and they're doing furnace, you probably will not hear a click. Yeah, you're not going to hear a click. So I'm on furnace. I heard no click. You may not be able to, but I can. And now I'm going to bring my slider up, and when I get to that magic point, I'm going to hear a click. Let's see here. There it goes, right at 65-ish. It could have been something as simple as that, okay? Um, I've gone on service calls where the customer states that their water pump's not working, okay? They flip the switch, the water pump's not working, water pump's not working, only to find out that the water pump's not working because there's pressure in the line. There's, on those water pumps, there's a limit switch, the pressure switch on the head of those water pumps. So you open up a valve. See, they were just thinking the water pump needs to, to make the noise, okay? So that is why I'm trying to drive the point home, and I'm not going to do it again, on have the customer demonstrate to you some things. So. I have not broken on any tools. I'm doing some listening checks. After I heard the click up top, and I'm going about my diagnosis, my initial diagnosis, that is when I decided, hey, I hear the click up top, therefore I got 12 volts up in the ceiling plenum because that relay is controlled by 12 volts. I know I have 12 volts up in my ceiling plenum. Do I have 12 volts at my furnace? So again, we don't have to break out any tools, take walls out, take furnaces out. Let's see, do we have 12 volts at the furnace? Now, what's the best place to check for that? Let's start at the fuse panel. So I'm gonna spin you around, the fuse panel is right down here, and let me walk you through what I'm going through to diagnose this, okay? At this point, I don't need any tools, I just need my meter, okay? So let's see what we got. Okay, so here they have, obviously this is a little bit of an older RV, but the principles are the same, even if you have a really high-end coach. We're following the trail. So I'm gonna set my meter up here. Now I think I have fixed this first issue that I'm gonna demonstrate but it was an issue originally, and what I'm about to show you, which I believe is fixed, is what caused me to say, hey, let me get a, um, my 
camera going here. So I've got 12 volts DC. Can you guys see that? There's a glare. It doesn't matter for our purposes. So I think you can see that. These are the fuses. The legend down here tells me that's the furnace. Okay. So this should be the minus. This one should be plus. And when I do that, I have 13.7 volts. 13.6, 13.7. Okay. Two things to take away from there. The fact that I got a 13.6, that tells me right away my converter is converting. My battery is, is being charged at 13.6 because there's no way I'm going to get 13.6, 13.7 out of a battery. So as a technician, now if I would have checked that and I got 11 and I'm plugged into shore power, my mind would tell me, hey, I need to go look at this converter because the converter is not generating power. Because the converter, it says on this cover here, uh, let's see, output is, what does it say? Give me a minute here. Converter, charger, electrical input, and output is 45 amps, 12 volts DC. Where is my, it says 12 volts DC, but traditionally 13.6 is the number that makes sense in my brain. I'm sure it's on here. This is, I don't, ha I'm not taking the time to read everything. So then I'm going to check. Okay. So I got. 13.7, 13.8. I know my converter's working. And then this one's to my furnace. So now at this, as of this point, my furnace is getting power. But the reason I started this video and the reason I'm really trying to add value to you guys is because when I first did this right here, just now, there was zero between these two points. Nothing, nothing at all. Okay. Now I went immediately to the battery. Here, let's, I'll take you. Let's go to the battery. Let's, 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 let's do this together. We're going, here we go. I'm going to just pick you up and carry you. Hoorah, fireman's carry. Not really. Here we have our battery. I've already got the battery box off. And back up in here, I was checking these two. And this guy right here was open. Okay. I had 12 volts on this side, nothing on that side. Okay. He since reset himself. But when I first got here, that was wide open. Okay. So then I took little jumpers that I made and I jumpered these two ports here. First, I checked to in these lugs to ground to see if there's a dead short. And then I connected these two with a little jumper I have that's got a little 10 amp fuse in it. And that reset this guy. And then now he's working. But when I got to this point right here, I said, hey, to myself, self, let's get the video going on here because I was expecting this to stay open. And then the whole video, my thought was going to be, hey, I came out here to work on a furnace and it turns out to be a little circuit breaker right there. Yeah, everything's working. But it turns out that we're gonna replace that because that's a, there's something going on with this guy. I'm not gonna come all the way out here and not replace a little $10 part. I don't even know what those things cost. Uh, they're in our catalog and whatever they are, but I'm gonna replace that because that was dead when I got here, okay? And it was dead on this side that's got the yellow connector on it and it was dead up in the front on the service panel. Now he's working, but he's suspicious and I don't like him, okay? So let's go back inside. At this point, I'm now starting to break out some tools, okay? But everything I just did took all of maybe five minutes. It took me longer to get the video camera and, and explain everything than it did for me just to do what I just did. But the point I really wanna drive home is when I first got here, by just doing checks and listening, it the whole problem could have been that fuse up front, couldn't have. Yes, it could have, okay. So for the first time now, we're gonna break out some tools. We're gonna to gain access to this furnace and I'm, I don't have my fancy tripod. So you guys are just going to have to be squatted down there. Okay. So a lot of stuff. Now I'm suspicious if the, uh, now, okay. Another thing I'm thinking, could it be the cell switch at this point? Could it be the cell switch? I see a lot of debris and dander in here. I would submit to you, no, it cannot be the cell switch, not at this point. And the reason it cannot be the cell switch at this exact point in time is because the very first thing that happens on a furnace is the fan starts, doesn't it? The fan starts, the control board's looking for an open cell switch, and then it needs to see that cell switch change states to closed. Only at that point would we detect a fault on the cell switch. But the fact is, when I'm trying to start this furnace, and it is not starting, no nothing at all, then it can't immediately be the sale switch, even though there's all this crap in it, okay? Now all the wires are on the other side of this thing. And, oh, this is really disgusting. So I'm going to get uh, 
a vacuum and clean up some of this stuff so I can gain access to those wires. What I'm gonna to wanna to prove, it, uh, and so your wires, there's gonna be a red, a yellow, and two blues, just like I had mentioned. So what I'm gonna to wanna to prove, before I pull this furnace out, again, I'm not gonna pull the furnace unless I have to. I need to verify that there's some wire nuts over there where my wires connect, um, et cetera. I need to make sure that I have good power going to this. Um, then on, the, on this furnace, there's a reset limit switch, or a, a switch that's got a reset on it. And maybe my, um, a mouse may have chewed my wires or go to my thermostat. But before I stick my arm up in there, let me get a little vacuum and clean some of that out. Okay, let me bring you up to speed with what we've done so far, or what I've done so far. I vacuumed up there. Now, there are two blue wires right there, and I've taken my piercing probes, and I've pierced into the two blue wires. I need to prove, again, customer states, furnace doesn't work. Well, before I pull this furnace, because we charge by the flat rate here, and pulling this furnace, there's a flat rate associated with it. So I, I'm still within my diagnosis time. We do one flat rate to diagnose the problem. I would have been done with this a long time ago, but I'm taking my time to walk you guys through this, hoping that it'll add value to you guys. So furnace doesn't work. A lot of guys might come in and pull the furnace out, but I need to prove, is it the furnace? Is it worth pulling the furnace out and charging that flat rate to do a furnace R&R, &R? okay? I'm not convinced that I need to pull the furnace out, but I'm not even at that point where I can make that decision yet. So what I've done, this two blue wires, I need to prove some things about those two blue wires. I can tell a lot about those two blue wires. Remember earlier, I said that one of those blue wires should have 12 volts on it and then that the other one should not, okay? So let's prove that. If I have 12 volts on one of those blue wires, then I know that I'm getting 12 volts to my furnace, don't I, okay? So here, as I'm pulling the flashlight away, it's dark in the hole. Okay, you got my meter right there. I've got one side of my meter connected to one side of the blue wires. Just pick one. See if you're gonna play the lottery today. Um, get the glare off that. Okay, that's good enough. So I've got my meter in DC. I'm just gonna touch the base. Look, I got 13.7, okay? So what that means, this red lead out of my meter is going to one of those blue wires, okay? So I've got 13.6. Therefore, I have 12 volts going into the furnace and I have 12 volts leaving the furnace. So I don't need to tap into my red wire in here to see if I got 12 volts going in. I'm getting it on the way out. If I did not find my 13 volts, or I'm gonna just stick by saying 12. If I did not find my 12 volts at this point, I would have switched the leads to the other piercing probe on the other blue wire to see if I have it there. But the fact that I have it here tells me we're good to go. The next thing I'm gonna do, so now I know I have voltage. So now I'm gonna switch my meter over to continuity mode and I'm gonna plug in the other piercing probe. So now my meter has both piercing probes connected to it, right? One of them's got 12 volts on it, but I'm gonna do my meter in continuity mode and I'm gonna run up here and I'm gonna flip that furnace on. Remember the clicking sound that we heard? That's it touching it together, isn't it? So if I touch these two together, I should hear a beep, shouldn't I? Because these two wires are touching together. So let me get to the thermostat, here we go. Moving the thermostat up and down. I hear my click, I do not hear a beep, okay? So it seems to me that we may have a wiring issue, okay? So again, these two probes here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna touch these two probes together. Let me get my light in there so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, I'm gonna touch these two probes together, which is going to simulate that relay up top closing, okay? So I'm gonna touch these two together. Now I'm getting a beep, okay? I'm getting a beep, but I'm, the furnace is not starting, okay? But sometimes these furnaces have, uh, have a, uh, a time delay, so I'm just gonna leave them pressed together like that. So there's my beep on my meter that I was expecting to get when I close. So at this point right now, I'm suspicious on the wire that goes up the wall to that thermostat up top. Um, I didn't get a beep, so I'm suspicious of either the control module up in the air conditioner or the wire going up to the air conditioner. Now I've got, I am now the thermostat because I just touched these two wires together. The furnace still did not start. So now I would want to gain access at this point, only at this point, am I ready to pull this furnace? I've proven the furnace is getting power. I've proven that furnace power is leaving the furnace on the blue wire. And with me shorting it out here, I've proven that power is coming back down 
and by shorting it out, the furnace should start. I'm giving the furnace the start signal right now, and the furnace is still not starting. So, so far we've found several things wrong. One, that circuit breaker up front that was open when I got here, and then I jumpered it and it closed itself. Two, I'm suspicious. I hear the click up in the air and the thermostat up top, the control module and the air conditioner up top, but I'm not hearing this beep when I cycle it on and off. So there's an issue, a wiring issue here. The trick there is just get some temporary wire, tap it into here, run it along the floor, go into the air conditioner control module, plug it in there. If that makes it work, then you know you have a problem in your wiring in the wall. Okay. Uh, and if that's it, I've got this other fancy meter, which will tell me length uh, to a short, length to an open. And I might use that meter to tell me how far the short is. Um, uh, what is that, a Fluke TS? I'll, I'll send a link to that one. It's a Fluke TS90 or something like that. I got on a whole nother video on how that meter works. Uh, let me turn this off. Um, or you just pull a new wire. But at this point, I know I've got power leaving the furnace. I know I've got 12 volts coming into the furnace. I know it's leaving on the blue wire and I know it's coming back on the blue wire because I did it just right there and the furnace is still isn't starting. So at this point, only at this point, I'm ready to pull this furnace. Okay, so I'm gonna get that done now. Uh, you don't need to watch me do that. It's gonna be a couple screws and uh, take the uh, exhaust port out the front. I'm gonna save you some time. I'm just, you don't need to watch me pull the furnace because you're not gonna gain any value of it because every furnace is installed relatively differently and uh, you just gotta figure it out. So next time you see this furnace, it's gonna be out. Now the furnace is loose. I have not removed it. It's still, I had enough line to connect, to keep the LP connected and my, my, my wires are still intact. So it's not a complete removal. I can still do all my testing right here. And this is exactly the way I want it. I wanna be able to stick my probe inside the control board inside there. Now there's something I noticed that I wanna show you. If we look inside of there, that's a dinosaur electronics board. Okay, so that tells me that this has been worked on previously because that is not a factory, that, that's not a, a board that's native to this furnace, okay? Uh, what are we working on? We're working on an SF35F. So SF, Suburban Furnace, 35, 35 BTU, F, no door, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do now is these wire probes up in here, uh, I'll talk you through it. So let me, so if you look in there, that's a connector. Okay, I need to prove that I'm getting power into that connector, into that control board. Okay, that's what we're gonna do next. And let me get you set up so you can watch. Okay, so what I've done, there's two screws. That, uh, you take the two screws off and you can take this plate out. And here's our control board. I'm trying to keep everything intact as best as I can. Because um, I wanna do testing on this thing. Okay, now what I've got over here is I've pierced into the two blue leads that leave and go up to the thermostat. Uh, control module up in the air conditioner. Therefore, I'm sending a signal back down to me. And again, these two leads are hot, so you don't want to short them out. So therefore, I should have power coming back to my, let's look here. Uh, I want to just verify I've got 12 volts there. Meter is showing 12 volts coming back. Okay, so that's good. And I'm just looking here. Okay, the fact that I have 12 volts going tells me that my switch is good. So I'm just probing known good points. Uh, okay, so I'm giving power right now to the blower motor. Okay, so I'm down here, this red wire, it's on the board itself. I don't, I, you guys are way up in the corner. If you look at my meter, it's 13.8 volts and it's going directly to the motor. Okay, so what this is telling me is that the motor is getting power but it's not starting. So I'm gonna reach in here, I'm gonna turn the squirrel cage. Okay, the, it's not seized, so we might have a problem with our motor. So let's do this now. Let's do a bench test on our motor. So I'm going to unplug this lead that goes to the motor. Okay. Uh, I just want this. There we go. Okay, so I've got this big red wire goes to my motor. I'm going to, uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to grab my favorite little test lead here. I'm going to put red right in here. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to put a known good 12 volts directly into that motor. Okay, so there we go there. And 
this one. I want to verify that the motor is grounded. By verifying it's grounded, I could just ground that to the case, can't I? I'm going to take the battery off my drill and I'm going to give the motor a known good 12 volts. So here I have red and on my battery pack, I got a plus, so that goes there. So if the motor's good, I should get 12 volt, I could get a motor running. Okay, so the, the problem on this one is the motor's bad. Okay, so we really can't go any farther with this furnace until we put a new motor in it. Okay, so basically um, the troubleshooting led us to a bad motor. I really need to get this motor replaced before I start diagnosing some other things. That might be the whole thing. Earlier I had said, could it have been the sales switch? Hey, maybe, maybe the sales switch is right here. Sounds good. But we don't know because the first thing this board does is it sends power to the motor. And we prove that because we're sending 12 volts out of this board to that motor and the motor's not starting. Okay. So let me see if I have a motor. Okay. I just checked my service trailer. I have probably five. I counted five different furnace motors, one each, but I do not have this one. Okay. So we're going to basically shut this video off here and um, we'll get that motor. And I've already got another video on swapping out a motor, but uh, if this one proves to be a little challenging, maybe I'll make a video of it. The challenge of swapping out the motor is you have to get that combustion wheel, which is a smaller wheel off of the far side. And sometimes you're going to spend a lot of time getting that off. Uh, so a lot of times what I'll do, well, not a lot of times, it's just a standard. When I buy a new motor for these furnaces, I always buy two new wheels, the combustion wheel and the blower wheel. Um, they're like 12 bucks for a wheel. It's just, just do it, put a new wheel on there. Um, they're better balanced and, and just, just do that because if you take those wheels off and this one's a metal, I can see right here, this one's got a metal wheel. If you're working that thing and you're trying to get it off and you wiggle it just wrong, it gets out of balance, you're going to just have vibration issues. So uh, when I buy a motor for the furnaces, I always buy two new wheels, the combustion wheel and the blower wheel, just, just three parts. It's just an automatic thing. So uh, yeah, hey man. Um, so where we're at right now, um, I'm going to stop the service call with this furnace motor. We're going to talk to the customer. We're going to let them know that this is what we found out with it. And um, do they want to proceed? Um, now, I will mention this. Suburban does have a, um, what do they call it, like a core exchange program. So if you're running into some problems with your Suburban furnace, you might want to look and see or talk to your dealer. Or if you're a tech or something, just call Suburban and, and see if they have a core exchange for that particular um, model number. Okay. Uh, some of the parts, especially the motors, uh, and that's where we use the core exchange mostly. Some of the motors, they don't make them anymore. They don't have the machines to make the motors. They just stopped making those and they made new motors. And uh, so, well, gee, your whole furnace is shot. And uh, so Suburban does offer core exchange. Look into that. Basically, you're leaving the, the cage, the, the carcass that the furnace goes into. You take that screw off the back, you slide the whole guts out. I think you send them the old motor or you send them something. Um, the office figure knows what to do. And then that new core slides right on in and replaces it. So file that away. It's a tip for the suburban core exchanges. Um, but uh, so we determined that there's something wrong with that circuit breaker up in the front. We determined there may or may not be something wrong with the wire going up and down to the ceiling plenum. Um, so it could be the control board or the wire. We haven't troubleshot that yet, but we do know that when we flip that switch to furnace, we're not getting the beep that we expect to get when I touch those two wires together myself. So there's still an open issue with that wire. Um, what I'd like to do is put a new motor in this thing, get it to work right here where I touch my wires together. And at that point, then we'll pick up the troubleshooting up the wall, thermos, uh, the circuit breaker and all those types of things with me. So, hey, if this video added value to you up to this point, give us a thumb up. We really appreciate that. Um, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. For those of you watching from all over the world, it's, it's a tremendous honor to be having your attention with all the other people that are watching. So I really, that's a personal from my heart to you. Thank you for watching. Um, we're getting comments from literally many, many, many different countries. So um, it's because of you guys that we're doing this. <laughs> so hope it adds value. So give us a thumb up. And so where am I at here? I'm in Elwha. Yeah, I'm right. The Elwha River is just right over here. Uh, this is an area that we've been to several times. It's stunningly beautiful. The clouds are really low over the mountains, but they're right there. Um, if I take you over, you've been with me this far. Let's. I'm going to take you over there. I'm going to say goodbye now. And um, I got mountains over there, and I got mountains over there. I'm going to see if we get the, the the sun has come out. So let me grab you guys, and I'm going to flip you around. And uh, here, let me flip you around.
Okay, there we go. A uh, great shot of our service truck and our trailer. We've had a lot of people asking me to do a video of my service trailer. I'll probably get around to that. It's just a mess in there. But uh, so here we have all these mountains. Oh, there was a property for sale just right over there on the left of the screen that was like a million bucks. And uh, like, you take cash? No. <laughs> I'm not there. But anyway, so yeah, earlier the mountains, the clouds were really low and that's when the rain was here. So, all right guys, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next video.